welcome to the course on uh, medical biomaterials. As I mentioned yesterday, biomaterial is any substance, it can be a synthetic or it can be a natural or a combination of both. Uh, it is used for maybe a short period of time or very long period of time or forever, you know, into the human body. Uh, it is meant to treat or augment or diagnose or replace any tissue or organ or any bone uh, of the functions of the body. Okay. So, it could be a replacement of a, a knee joint or a hip joint, it could be a stainless steel plate um, which will support broken bones or it could be a lens which is um, ocular lens which is uh, placed inside after an uh, eye surgery. Okay. It could be a cardiovascular stent which has to remain inside for a very long time or it could be a urinary catheter uh, which is placed for a few hours so that the urine from the patient gets drained. So, it could be very few hours duration or it could be many, many years okay. and uh, it could be a synthetic material or it could be a natural material. So, when I talk about the material, it could be a metal like titanium, stainless steel, cobalt, chromium or it could be a polymeric material like a polymethyl methacrylate, uh, poly lactic acid, glycolic acid or it could be a polyvinyl alcohol, uh, polyethylenes, uh, polyterethalates or it could be a ceramic uh, like hydroxyapatite, calcium sulphate, uh, magnesium oxides or it could be a biopolymer uh, like glucon, cyclodextrins and so on actually. Okay? So, we are going to see all of them in the course of time. Uh, so, the most important point you need to consider when you are designing biomaterial is the biocompatibility that means, the material has to perform uh, within the host uh, for the specific application and without creating any problems to the host like toxicity. There are different types of toxicity that are possible, um, local toxicity, systemic to toxicity and uh, what is the response of the human? when the material, a foreign material is placed inside the body. So, that has also to be considered when you are designing a biomaterial, okay? uh, because uh, the material may be coming in contact with the host tissues, uh, blood, uh, membranes, uh, proteins and various parts of the body. So, uh, it should not cause adverse reaction whether it is short term or long term. Um, this is a good book uh, to follow, um, have a look at this book. Biomaterial Sciences and Introduction to Materials in Medicine. It gives a lot of information on biomaterials. Okay. Uh, as I go along, I will suggest some other books also, but uh, this is a good book to follow. It is an interdisciplinary area. Uh, it involves uh, expertise of bioengineers, um, material scientists, polymer chemists, polymer technologists, metallurgists, immunologists because uh, the material could cause immune response. So, you need to consider that um, it involves chemists who may be uh, synthesizing uh, new uh, surfaces, modifying surfaces, it will involve biologists, it will involve physicians and surgeons. So, as you can see it is extremely interdisciplinary, okay. it starts with engineers, scientists, medical practitioners and so on. Okay. So, that is why I, as I said yesterday, it is going to be an exciting time for the um, area of biomaterials, especially research as well as in the manufacturing of new uh, materials and products. Uh, these are some of the journals, you can see a large list of journals if you are interested to read more the current topics as well as if you are interested in publishing your research. Okay. A large number of uh, journals are given, some of them are very specific to biomaterials and some of them could be interdisciplinary. Um, sub, um, journals like advanced functional materials, biomaterials, tissue engineering part B, bio macromolecules, um, acta biomaterials. So, you can see that uh, they some of the journals may take uh, studies on metals, some of them may be on polymers, some of them on blends, um, some of them on uh, the immunological aspects, tissue engineering aspects and so on actually. So, a huge number of journals are now available where uh, you can uh, think of publishing your research also. Some of the companies which work in biomaterials, um, Royal DSM, Wright Medical Technology, uh, Corbion, Zimmer, uh, Bayer, Carpenter Technology, Covalon Technology, Ionic, BASF, 
in vivo, Berkeley, advanced biomaterials, CAM, bioceramics, collagen, NDP orthopedics, Densply International, Biomed, DSM Biomedic, Medical, Noble Biomaterials. As you can see, a uh, large number of companies located in US and Europe. You will be coming across uh, and these names if you are uh, interested in uh, purchasing samples and so on actually. Uh, the biomaterials market is going to be huge. It is predicted in the year 2020, uh, it will touch approximately 130 billion US dollars. Okay. So, the market is divided either based on the material or based on the type of application. So, when you are talking about materials, uh, metallic, ceramics, polymers uh, or natural biopolymers or natural biomaterials. If you look, you are looking at applications, then it could be cardiovascular applications, orthopedic applications, dental applications, um, plastic surgery, wound healing, uh, neurological applications, tissue engineering, ophthalmology application. So, you can divide the market either based on the materials or based on the applications. Okay. Um, so, the biomaterials market is categorized into metallic, ceramics, polymers and natural like I said you know and metallics uh, uh, segment is very large especially in the year 2015. Okay. Like I said huge number of uh, metals have come into the biomaterials area. So, the metallic segments could be involving stainless steel, uh, stainless steel is used in orthopedic plates, titanium, titanium is used uh, quite a lot in uh, stents, again in orthopedic joints, then titanium alloys, different types of uh, metals are added to titanium to improve certain properties, cobalt chrome alloys, um, silver, gold, platinum. So, a uh, lot of metals are used. Uh, as biomaterials for different applications, for um, antibacterial properties, for wear, taking care of wear and tear, for withstanding uh, high tensile strength uh, and so on actually. If you look at uh, ceramic segment, these are aluminum oxide, zirconia, calcium phosphate, calcium sulphate, carbon, glass, all these come under ceramic segment and uh, nowadays there is a lot of interest in ceramics because uh, they are extremely biocompatible and um, they nicely um, fit into the system, human system without causing any adverse effect, especially as you know hydroxyapatite, uh, calcium phosphate, calcium sulphates, they are all part of the bone and various tissues. So, uh, they are extremely biocompatible. If you look at the polymer segment, we have huge number of polymers. There is a lot of interest in polymer biomaterial because of many properties. Uh, polymers are very flexible, okay. polymers can be bio biodegradable, polymers could be made into different shapes and sizes, uh, polymers uh, could be blended with other polymers to get very specific uh, um, property, polymers could be surface modified to improve its uh, biocompatibility and antibacterial property. Hence, polymers are widely now being used um, polymethyl metacrylate, especially the uh, oral and teeth contains a lot of uh, acrylic acid in polymethyl metacrylate. Polyethylene is used in uh, uh, joints, okay, rotatable joints, polyesters are used in uh, grafts, vascular grafts, um, polyvinyl chloride again being a highly Inert material, it is also used quite a lot inside the human system. Silicone rubber is used in urinary, uh, urinary catheters, urinary stents, the nylon is used in sutures. Again, nylon is extremely uh, strong and has a very high tensile strength. So, it is used in areas where you require strength. Um, polyether, ether ketone, okay, it is called peak, and these are very specialized polymers which. Uh, um, have many applications. In addition, other polymers like PLA, polylactic acid, PVA, polyvinyl acetate um, or polyvinyl alcohol, then we have the PLGA, polylactic glycolic acid. So, these are more polymers and many of them are approved by the FDA uh, for um, use in the human system. Then the fourth type of uh, biomaterial market is natural. Okay. 
uh, and that means it is either produced by bacteria or cells or uh, found in plants and so on like hyaluronic acid, collagen, gelatin, fibrin, cellulose, chitin, alginate, silk. Um, the beauty of these biomaterials are they are very biocompatible, um, hence uh, they will not have cause any systemic uh, problems, but they may have some disadvantages like strength, uh, tensile strength or flexural strength and so on. So, what uh, industries do is they prepare blends of uh, natural polymers and synthetic polymers to arrive at a desired property, but the natural polymers are highly biocompatible. So, they are also finding applications uh, quite a lot nowadays uh, um, in the biomaterial market. So, the biomaterial market if you look at it based on application um, cardiovascular, orthopedic, dental, plastic surgery, wound healing, tissue engineering, ophthalmology, neurological, um, other applications like drug delivery systems, gastrointestinal, bariatric surgery, urinary applications. Okay. Out of this the cardiovascular is the largest share of the biomaterials because uh, um, we are talking about stents, we are talking about uh, shunts, we are talking about diaphragm valves, uh, we are talking about heart valves, uh, we are talking about uh, heart patches and so on actually. So, cardiovascular is the biggest uh, segment in the area of biomaterial market. This is followed by orthopedic because orthopedic when we talk about we are talking about uh, um, areas like uh, uh, bone replacement, joint replacement, um, uh, augmenting after a fracture, um, bone plates, bone screws, wires, different types of metals and uh, polymeric blends are used. So, the orthopedic uh, uh, takes the second largest application um, the year 2015 and the cardiovascular um, is the largest um, share of the biomaterial market as far as the application is concerned. Okay. Um, so, as I said yesterday that um, just like drugs the biomaterials once it is designed in the lab and tested in vitro uh, has to go undergo uh, just like uh, drug uh, animal trials and then human trials. So, a lot of animal trials have to be performed um, like rabbits, guinea pigs, mice, crabs, pigs bacteria. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, you have to test the actual material or sometimes we need to test uh, um, the extracts or eluent that is coming out of uh, these okay, uh, to see whether the lichens coming out of the biomaterial is causing any um, cytotoxicity or problems like that. Okay. And then finally, it has to go to human volunteers for long term studies. Okay. Um, so, different parts of uh, animals could be tested depending upon the type of application at for which you are looking at. If I am looking at cardiovascular uh, area then I, am, I may not be using small animals, I may be using larger animals like pig or even uh, uh, dogs. Okay. If it is uh, biocompatibility or cytotoxicity I may go into smaller animals. Um, so, depending upon the type of uh, application we may test in small or big animals actually okay, before it actually goes into the human volunteer studies. Um, so, there are many um, testing labs are there, um, everybody follows this association for assessment and accreditation of laboratory animal care international. Okay, so, they do lot of testing on animal like rabbit pyrogen, uh, US pharmacopoeia class testing, sensitization, implantation subchronic and chronic uh, um, effects, toxicity effect, intracutaneous uh, reactivity, irritation, necropsy, histology. Okay. Then in vitro testing could be on cell lines, different types of cell lines, cytotoxicity, hemolysis that means uh, what happens um, um, effect of biomaterial on the blood. Then complement activation, um, PT, PTT, AMS, mutagenicity, carcinogenicity. Um, generally all these labs follow all the um, usual um, guidelines based on say USP or ISO or JP or European or British Pharmacopoeia, FDA or Food and Drug Administration or ASTM standards that is American standard for testing of materials. Okay. 
So, the test conditions could vary because uh, like I yesterday I told you the my bio material may be placed um, in an area which is in contact with the blood. So, the pH of the blood is 7.4. Um, so, the material will be coming in contact with the plasma of the blood, maybe the red blood corpuscles, white blood corpuscles. Okay. Whereas, if the bio material is a um, urinary catheter or ureteral stent, it may be um, the pH may be neutral, but it may be in contact with the salts present in the urine. Um, okay, like um, calcium oxalate, okay, magnesium salts, and it may be in contact with the bacteria like E. coli and Proteus mirabilis. So the biomaterial has to be tested depending upon its application. Okay, so the pH, as you know, varies quite a lot in the human body. Okay. Um, if it is going to be in the region of stomach, then we are talking about very acidic pH, whereas if it is in the inside the body in the blood plasma, we are talking about uh, 7.4. Okay. So, the material has to be tested at various pHs depending upon what you are looking at. Then oxygen, this is also very important, especially if you are talking about uh, uh, ocular lenses, permeability of oxygen. Um, is a very important factor. So, oxygen and uh, diffusion, oxygen partial pressure needs to be looked at uh, depending upon the location whether it is uh, interstitial, venous or artery. Temperature uh, 37 degree centigrade or if it is skin it is much less 28 degree centigrade. Mechanical stress, okay. uh, if it is tendon the peak stress could be almost 10 power 8 Newton per meter square whereas if it is muscle 10 power 7 Newton per meter square. Stress cycles because um, we are talking about uh, joints which may undergo a lot of cycles or it, we are talking about uh, diaphragm valves which may be um, undergoing a lot of cycles. Um, heart muscle contraction we are talking in terms of 10 power 6 that is million uh, per year cycles whereas if it is peristalsis it could be 10 power 5. And then the length of implant could vary between days, months or even much, much longer depending upon the application. And also it may be just placed below the skin or in the blood region or it could be in the brain region or mucous region depending upon uh, what type of study we are uh, trying to undertake. Okay. So, the test conditions vary quite a lot, uh, the locations uh, where the biomaterial has to be implanted varies quite a lot and the duration also vary can vary quite a lot. Okay. And there are some FDA and ISO guidelines, uh, FDA mandates test based on length of contact that means it could be 24 hours, uh, 1 to 30 days or greater than 30 days. Okay. Um, ISO 10993 this is the European Union certification. Okay. Um, okay. So, one needs to consider the FDA and ISO guidelines. Uh, for testing of biomaterials. Okay. Um, classification of biomaterials is very important. Um, I briefly did mention about classification of biomaterials. Let us look at it more detail. Uh, so, we have the artificial materials, we have the natural materials. Okay. Uh, natural materials could be biopolymers, like I mentioned it could be uh, alginate, it could be glucons, it could be dextrins, it could be hyaluronic acids. Okay, these are all produced by bacteria or fungus or cells or even derived from plant or animal origin um, like some of the collagen okay. or it could be artificial that means I make it in the lab. Okay. The artificial material could be inorganic or organic. Okay. Organic uh, um, be, that is using carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur. So, organic biomaterials um, are generally made of polymers. Okay, PET, PMMA, uh, PTF, um, FE or PLGA, PLA, PVA and so on. These are all polymers or it could be metals, stainless steel, titanium, chromium, nickel or it could be ceramics, uh, calcium sulphate, hydroxyapatite, oxides of magnesia okay, and alumina or it could be a combination. Nowadays, there is a lot of interest in hybrid biomaterials. Can I combine? Uh, the strength of metals uh, with the flexibility of polymers and biodegradability of polymers. So, can I design a biomaterial uh, which may have a metal core 
but on the surface there could be a biodegradable polymer which will have some drug and the polymer slowly degrades over a period of time. So, the drug gets eluted and uh, um, maintains the biocompatibility of the material. So, nowadays a lot of combinations of materials are coming um, can I coat uh, uh, say hip joint with the polymer layer so that uh, the uh, friction is reduced and so on actually. So, there is a lot of uh, interest now happening on hybrid type of biomaterials where you are combining metals with polymers, ceramics with metals, ceramic with polymers and so on actually. Uh, so, we will look at uh, some of them as we go along uh, slightly in more detail. Okay. Some commonly used biomaterials, silicon rubber, uh, silicon has been used in catheters, tubings okay, uh, quite a lot. Uh, they were also used in uh, ureteral stents. Um, then comes Dacron. Dacron is nothing but uh, um, okay, ester, polyester. They are used in vascular grafts, large diameter vascular grafts. So, if there are any um, vascular um, vessel needs to be replaced because of infection or because of damage, then Dacron type of uh, uh, polymers or tubes are used to replace that you are talking in terms of uh, 2 to 3 mm in diameter. Cellulose, okay, this is a natural polymer, they are quite widely used in dialysis membrane, especially if uh, a person has problem uh, with the uh, okay, kidney um, and uh, dialysis has to be performed to remove the salts and other toxins accumulated in the blood, uh, and they you perform something called a dialysis and their cellulose membranes are used uh, to uh, remove the salts and the toxins from the blood. Okay. Polymethyl methacrylate, um, this is uh, a polymer widely used in dental application, it is used in lenses, bone cement, okay. polyurethanes, okay. polyurethanes uh, they are very flexible almost uh, like rubber. So, they are again used in catheters, they are made used in pacemaker leads. Um, hydrogels, they are used in ophthalmological devices, they are extremely hydrophilic. So, um, they can retain water, they can swell in water and so on. They are also used in drug delivery systems uh, because it is extremely, they are extremely hydrophilic, um, they, uh, they do not cause any adverse reaction and they can swell and the drug that is present inside the hydrogel. Uh, because of the selling gets released. Stainless steel, uh, because of its strength it is used in orthopedic devices, um, it can use for replacement of uh, bone parts okay. and uh, it can also help in maintaining uh, the growth of bone after um, a, a fracture. So, stainless steel is used there. Also it is used in stents, um, of course, uh, uh, cardiovascular stents nowadays use uh, uh, extremely hybrid uh, metals like titanium, nickel and so on. Titanium uh, is very biocompatible, so it is used quite a lot in orthopedic, it has got good strength um, both uh, tensile strength and compressive strength. It is also used in dental devices like uh, screws, um, alumina because it is a ceramic or inorganic material, it is very biocompatible, so it is used quite a lot in dental devices. Hydroxyapatite. After all, our bone uh, contains only hydroxyapatite, so it's widely used in orthopedic. It's extremely biocompatible, and um, bones grow nicely, especially after filling bone defects with the hydroxyapatite. It's also used in dental devices, okay, especially filling up uh, uh, gaps, um, and also for facial surgery. Collagen. Um, this is derived from animal, but it's reprocessed. It is used in wound dressings, ophthalmological application. As you can see, uh, this slide just gives you a brief uh, show of what type of materials um, that are used uh, for different applications. As you can see, um, metals come into the picture, um, non-metals like inorganic materials come into the picture, polymers come into the picture, also biomaterials come into the picture and uh, um, there is always an overlap of applications of this material in different areas of uh, uh, biomaterial design. Okay. Uh, so, 
what do biomaterials do? More in detail, they replace diseased part, especially uh, if you are doing dialysis. Assist in healing, for example, sutures, um, we tie uh, the skin using nylon um, or biodegradable material, okay. Improve function, okay. So, they are in contact, um, correct function like in spinal rods, especially if there is a spinal defect, uh, they place a long uh, sp um, metal stent or tube, okay. Correct cosmetic, this is for cosmetic surgery, when if one is talking about uh, surgery um, of nose or ear, either af after a, an accident or because of cosmetic, then we are, uh, we are thinking in terms of using a material like polyurethane or silicone. Um, mostly a polymeric material uh, which uh, will exactly appear like the human uh, tissue and they are flexible, soft and so they nicely fit af after an accident for or for a cosmetic surgery. Uh, aid uh, in detection like a probe, like if I am interested to have a implanted uh, glucose sensor or implanted uh, uh, device which will automatically um, correct your heartbeat, irregular heartbeat, then that is a probe. Uh, aid, uh, okay, transaction like catheter, replace some rotten portion like amalgam, you know, based on uh, mercury, uh, replace dead skins, artificial skins um, are now coming into research areas after a burn injury or after an accident, um, can we tissue engineer the entire skin and uh, replace the diseased skin or damaged skin using a tissue engineered, externally tissue engineered uh, skin. It could be an exterior um, portion or it could be even an interior um, tissue engineered portion. So, what are the problems of biomaterials? Acute toxicity, cytotoxicity, cyt that is a big problem. Okay, uh, because uh, we are processing the biomaterial, say there, so there could be toxic chemicals which may create adverse uh, response on the cells. So, cytotoxicity is a very important point. For example, arsenic could be causing cytotoxicity. Subchronic or chronic toxicity like lead. Sensitization, okay. So, sometimes the metals uh, like nickel, copper, chromium which are used uh, uh, either as lead wires or which are used in joints may slowly get leaching, uh, leached out um, and go into the bloodstream. And this may be in terms of uh, parts per uh, billion, but still it could cause uh, uh, certain sensitization uh, to the host. Okay. Genotoxicity. Carcinogenicity, sometimes it can cause cancer and uh, the biomaterial reaction can lead to inflammation, local inflammation and it is cancer. Uh, reproductive and or development, okay, reduction like lead, there is a lot of uh, talk about lead uh, products which contain lead may affect both uh, the developmental stage of the embryo or even the reproductive stage. Neurotoxicity, can the material hurt the neurological functions, uh, can the material cause immunological damage, immunotoxicity, um, pyrogenic or endotoxins. So, can the material lead into this? So, all these can happen. So, when we are designing the material, we have to be very careful. Um, it has to be approved by FDA um, saying that uh, it does not cause any of these. Uh, toxicity. So, we need to perform, if it is not approved by FDA, we need to perform all these tests before it can be approved by FDA. So, it is much more uh, uh, involved and complicated than drugs because uh, in drug discovery, drug performs its action um, maybe few hours and then it gets completely uh, eliminated from the human system. Whereas, in a biomaterial, um, some of the materials have to stay inside the human for um, very long periods of time, years and years. So, we need to consider all these factors when you are designing a biomaterial. Okay. Um, so, we have uh, 
polymers, we have ceramics, we have metals, we have semiconductor materials and then we have synthetic biomaterials. So, all these are sometimes used on its own or sometimes they are used together. For example, polymers used in skins and cartilage, okay, when we are when we talk about polymers here, we talk about both synthetic and uh, natural ones, ocular implants, polymers are used, drug delivery devices, okay, biodegradable uh, drug delivery devices. Um, um, ceramics are used as for bone replacement, uh, bone surgery, um, okay, um, like your hydroxyapatites, heart valves, ceramics are used, dental implants, ceramics are used here, metals. We are talking in terms of orthopedic fixation like stainless steel screws, okay, like metal screws, then um, dental implants, sometimes titanium is used in dental implants, metals are used quite a lot, um, the uh, teeth cap, sometimes metals are used, semiconductor material like biosensors, implantable micro electrodes. So, you see um, large all these applications we have. Um, all these base uh, material which are used either uh, on its own or uh, they are used in combination to achieve certain function. Okay? And uh, there is no uh, hard and fast rule and that one cannot use uh, uh, a particular type of biomaterial for some other application. Depending upon the needs of the application, the materials can always be uh, tailor made uh, to satisfy that particular application. Okay, so, we will continue in the next class more on the biomaterials. Thank you very much.